Right, so I'm going to be going through another topic test, so this is coordinates and linear graphs. Right, so first question, circle the equation of the line that's parallel to y equals 6 minus 3x. Okay, so if it's parallel to this line, we need to look for one that's got the same gradient, and we just got to be careful, they're trying to trick us. So we, we know this is a straight line in the form y equals mx plus c, and they've just flipped round the mx and the c. So we see the number before the x is minus 3, and the only one of these which has a minus 3x is this one here. Okay, right, question 2. Which of these is a sketch of y equals 5 minus 4x? Circle the correct character. Okay, so let's think about what this line should look like. So we know it's got to cross the y-axis at 5, because that's our c, our y-intercept, and a gradient of minus 4 so because it's negative, it means it's going to be sloping downwards, and it's going to have to be quite steep if it's a 4. Okay. So if we look straight away, we can see A and C are both got a positive gradient, so it can't be them. So it's got to be B or D. And then we see D has got, uh, its y-intercept is minus 4, whereas B is the only one where it's 5. So this is the only one with a negative gradient and a y-intercept of 5, so that's got to be our answer. Question 3. A is 0, 4 and B is 10, 9. Work out the coordinates of the midpoint M of the line AB. Alright, so there is a formula for this, but I think it's kind of overkill. So it's kind of add together the two x-coordinates and divide by 2, and for the y-coordinate add together the two y-coordinates and divide by 2. But you can think of it as, I've got to go halfway along the x from A to B and halfway up the y coordinates from A to B. So our x coordinates go from 0 to 10, so halfway along would be 5. And our y coordinates go from 4 to 9, so they're going up by 5, so we're going to have to go up 2.5 from 4. So you can think of it as, this length is 5 and we want to go up 2.5. So 4 plus 2.5 is 6.5. Right, work out the gradient of line AB, so we've got a formula for that as well. So it's first y coordinate, sorry, second y coordinate minus the first, over second x coordinate minus the first, and it doesn't matter which way round you have them as long as you're consistent. So we're going to have 9 minus 4 over 10 minus 0. So 9 minus 4 is 5, 10 minus 0 is 10. So the gradient will be a half. You could also think of it as changing y over changing x, which some people prefer. So we've got a gradient was a half. CD is perpendicular to the line AB and passes through M. Work out the equation of the line CD. So let's picture what CD looks like. It's perpendicular to our line and it goes through M. Okay, now to find the line, you need two things. Uh, you either need two coordinates on the line, in which case you find the gradient and then sub in the other coordinate, or if you've got a point on the line, which we have here, so we know m is, what did we say, 5, 6.5, and we, we can also find the gradient. So our gradient of AB was a half, so the gradient of CD will have to be minus 2. Now I got that minus 2 from flipping the half, so it becomes 2 over 1, or 2, and changing the size, so changing it from positive to negative, so that will always work. Another way you can think of it is, for two, per, for two gradients to be perpendicular, they must have to multiply together to give minus 1. Okay, so let's think what we know now. We know our line has a gradient of minus 2, and it goes through the point 5, 6.5. Okay, so our m is minus 2, goes through 5, 6.5. So the way I would do this is, well, we can say y must equal minus 2x plus c, because we know m is minus 2, and then sub in our point. So we know y is 6.5 when x is 5. So we've got 6.5 equals minus 10 plus c, so c must be 16.5. So final answer, y equals minus 2x plus 16.5. Right, good. Question 4. AB is parallel to CD 
work out the equation of line CD. Okay, right, so if it's parallel, then what that means is it's going to have the same gradient as AB. So we're going to need to find about this line um, a point that lies on the line and its gradient. So if we find the gradient of AB, that will also give us the gradient of CD. So I'm going to think, well, let's do change in Y over change in X. So I change in Y, we've gone up 8, and I change in Y, we've gone along 2. So these are the points minus 2, 0, and 0, 8. So our gradient will be 8 over 2, which is 4. So you could have done this as doing the formula we did on the last question, or like this. So we know CD must have a gradient of 4, and hopefully you can spot, and also the point 6, 0, lies on the line. So similar to before then, we know y equals 4x plus c, so 0 equals 4 times 6 plus c, so I've subbed in the point we know on the line, so c will be minus 24 when we solve that equation, so the line cd will be y equals 4x minus 24. So it comes up time and time again, some way of finding a gradient, finding a point, and then doing this process to find the equation of the line. Right, 5. Line AB has equation 5y equals 2 minus 3x. Line CD has equation 3y equals 5x plus 1. Is AB perpendicular to CD? You must show your working. Okay, so what I'm thinking here is, well, um, let's find the gradients of both these lines to start with. So we need to get it in the form y equals mx plus c, which neither of these equations are at the moment, they're all mixed up. So to get y on its own here, we could divide by 3. So we get 5 over 3x plus a third. So what we're interested in is that gradient, the number before the x, which is 5 thirds. So for this one, we're going to have to divide by 5. So we'll have y equals 2 over 5 minus 3 over 5x. Okay, and then the gradient here is minus three fifths. So I reckon these are perpendicular now. Because if you think if we flip this one, it becomes three fifths, and we have to change the sign. A neat way of showing this in an exam though is five thirds times by minus three fifths equals minus one, and then saying something like therefore the lines are perpendicular. Okay, so. Yeah, that's one way of showing it is any two gradients, if they are perpendicular, multiply together to give minus 1. Right, last question. A is minus 5 minus 2, B is 2 minus 3, C is 4, 1, D is minus 3, 2. Prove that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Right, so if we're going to show this, firstly, we're going to have to show A, B is perpendicular to C, D, or D, C. And similarly, these two blue lines, AD, are perpendicular to BC. All right. So first of all, let's work out the gradients of AB and CD. So A was minus 5, minus 2. B was 2, minus 3. All right, so um, I'm going to do Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So minus 3 minus minus 2 over 2 minus minus 5. So that would give us minus 3 plus 2 minus 1. 2 plus 5 is 7. So this line has a gradient of minus a 7th. And we're going to have to do the same thing for C and D. So D was minus 3, 2. C was 4, 1. Okay. So hopefully we get minus a 7th. Right, so y2 minus y1 again, we'll have 1 minus 2 over 4 minus minus 3, which gives us minus a 7. Okay, so you, as you're going through showing this in the exam, you need to say something like, so AB is perpendicular to CD, and then we've got to do the same thing, this is quite tedious, for BC and, and AD. So for BC, we'll have 1 minus minus 3 over 4 minus 2. So we get 1 plus 3 is 4, 2. So m equals 2 for CD. And finally, um, for AD, we'll have 2 minus minus 2. Whoops. 
over minus 3 minus minus 5 which gives me 4 over 2 so we get m equals 2 again right so then we can say therefore it is a parallelogram right brilliant so part b says show that a b c d is not a rectangle so a rectangle is a special kind of parallelogram but these all these would have to be 90 degrees so all we do all we need to do is prove it's not a rectangle is to show just one of them is not 90 degrees well if so if this let's pick this corner c if this was 90 degrees then these two gradients would have to multiply together to give minus 1 but we can say 2 times minus 7 does not equal minus 1 so therefore not perpendicular therefore not a rectangle. rectangle we don't need to do it for all four because we we just need to prove it for one of them and that is the end of the paper okay good so again as always let me know if you have any requests for any other papers to go through thanks